Hey, what's up guys? I am a huge fan of creatine for its ability to improve both cognitive and physical performance. However, there are a handful of um, possible concerning side effects. And so in this video, I wanted to dive into some of the um, possible side effects that come along with creatine supplementation, as well as which ones uh, you should be especially concerned about. And so uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Zach and welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence-based approach to supplementation uh, and nutrition. If you are new to the channel, do me a huge favor and hit the red subscribe button uh, that's below this video so you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. All right, so in this video in particular, we're gonna be diving into the top three possible uh, side effects that come along with creatine supplementation. And the first one I wanted to talk about in this video um, specifically is the the possibility of hair loss. Now, this does seem to be one of the possible side effects that um, a lot of individuals are most concerned about simply because it's something that you can actually see. Now, I will say that it is fairly important to note here that this side effect has not been established yet, and there's really only two things that even lend credence to the possibility of creatine leading to hair loss, and the first one is just simply anecdotal evidence. A lot of folks online um, have noted specifically that when they started creatine supplementation that it began to lead to um, an increased rate of hair loss. And the second thing that lends to the credence of the possibility of creatine leading to um, expediated hair loss is the fact that there is one study in particular that has shown that creatine may lead to increases in uh, the levels of the hormone hormone DHT, which is the hormone specifically that has been identified as of late as the hormone that leads to hair loss. However, neither of these factors um, individually or together has established uh, creatine as a potential compound that may lead to hair loss. Now, the reason that it's so difficult to use anecdotal evidence, especially when it comes to creatine and hair loss, is because roughly 50% of men experience um, some level of hair loss by the time that they are 50 years old. And so it is extremely difficult to kind of parse through and decide uh, whether or not the individuals that are experiencing hair loss from creatine are actually experiencing it because of the uh, supplementation of creatine or because it's just natural hair loss and they just so happen to uh, notice their hair falling out once they are taking creatine. Now, when it comes to the research on this topic in particular, there's usually only one study that individuals like to use to point to the fact that creatine is able to uh, speed up the hair loss process. Um, and that is this specific study uh, that showed a relatively modest increase in DHT levels by 56%. And now again, DHT is the hormone that we believe right now is the hormone that leads to hair loss in men specifically and leads to uh, male pattern baldness. And so it does stand to reason if you increase uh, DHT by this degree by using creatine, uh, that creatine would lead to an increased rate of hair loss. However, there are zero studies that show this in particular. And when you kind of look at the topic as a whole, it does appear that male pattern baldness is primarily predicted by genetics. And so it is possible that individuals that are genetically predisposed to hair loss and kind of like an increased sensitivity to DHT, it is possible that these individuals may experience an increased rate of hair loss. However, again, it has not been established. And so I would only worry about hair loss and creatine supplementation. One, if you are already experiencing hair loss, you may experience an increased rate of hair loss. And two, anyone that has any significant hair loss in their family lineage and may be predisposed um, to an increased rate of hair loss may also want to um, reconsider creatine supplementation. However, by and large, for those individuals that do not have 
um, and increased predisposition to hair loss, they more than likely won't experience um, any tangible hair loss from supplementing with creatine. Now, the second possible side effect that I want to talk about today is the possible side effect of kidney damage. Now, one of the more common biomarkers that is looked at in individuals with kidney damage is creatinine levels. And now creatine, as I discussed in my previous videos, is used specifically at a cellular level in order to produce ATP within the mitochondria. And as a result of creatine metabolism, uh, creatinine is readily produced in the body and typically excreted by the kidneys. And now in individuals with kidney damage, um, they are not able to process this creatinine as efficiently as individuals with healthy kidneys. And again, is typically used as a biomarker for kidney damage. And so you can test creatinine levels um, and it is a fairly reliable uh, biomarker of kidney damage. Now, there are generally two ways of raising creatinine levels in the bloodstream. One obviously is by having damaged kidneys, obviously is going to decrease the ability of the kidneys to um, filter this creatinine and is going to increase creatinine levels. However, you can also increase creatinine levels simply by increasing creatine intake. And so because of this, exclusively using creatinine as a biomarker for kidney damage doesn't really tell you much in individuals that are uh, supplementing with creatine simply because um, supplementing with creatine also raises creatinine levels. Now, because of this, it's impossible to use uh, creatinine as a biomarker to test kidney function in individuals that are using creatine. Uh, but luckily for us, there have been some specific studies that have looked into the effects of creatine on kidney function, and they have unequivocally found uh, that creatine does not hinder kidney function, which is what is most important at the end of the day. Now, this study in particular actually took it a step farther and actually examined whether or not creatine intake had any effect on the kidneys of individuals that had kidney damage already, and they also found uh, that there was not any damage to the kidneys in individuals that had kidney damage. Now, my point in bringing this up is that with all of the research that we have on creatine's effects on the body and its effects on the kidneys in particular, it is fairly well established that creatine does not cause kidney damage. Now, with the two most concerning possible health side effects out of the way, let's go ahead and actually talk about the most common side effect, which happens to be an upset stomach. Now, because you can only absorb so much creatine at any given time through the gut lining, if you take large boluses of creatine, um, there is a tendency for that creatine to kind of get backlogged in the gut. And uh, one thing that I talked about in one of my other videos on creatine is the fact that creatine is a hydrophilic molecule, meaning that water loves to be wherever creatine is. And so um, if you have a backlog of a lot of creatine that is in the gut that is not able to be absorbed through the gut lining, that creatine has a tendency to pull water out of the bloodstream into the gut um, and cause what is formerly known as EBS or or explosive butt syndrome. Now, because of this, it is usually a good idea to increase your fluid intake while you're on creatine, um, simply so that you can avoid um, upset stomach while taking creatine. And so by taking creatine with increased levels of water, it kind of prevents your body from having to pull fluid out of the bloodstream and kind of cause that cramping um, that's associated with creatine sometimes. And so if you are an individual that is consuming creatine um, on a consistent basis and are consistently experiencing an upset stomach, you can do one of two things. One is to simply decrease the amount of creatine that you're taking um, at any one given time. And the second way, again, is to just simply increase your fluid intake. But when it comes to hair loss, I would only expect creatine to increase the rate of hair loss in individuals that are genetically already predisposed to losing their hair. Um, I would not ever expect creatine to damage kidneys, and if you are experiencing an upset stomach, uh, simply decrease your dose or increase your fluid intake, and you can pretty effectively uh, kind of cut out your risk of any side effects from supplementing with creatine. But other than that, guys, thank y'all for watching.